Uh, this next section briefly discusses uh, clock distribution and uh, we'll take a look at some of the issues associated with it. So this is uh, uh, obviously a highly uh, schematized uh, view of a, a chip and it would have a number of registers which are located at different places on the chip and it would have a, a clock input that has to feed those registers and, and the idea on a synchronous system is that you want them all to be fed at the very same time with the same clock period etc and you can't really distribute a clock instantaneously with perfect regularity for a variety of reasons. One of them is that they're at different locations on the chip. So a couple of uh, uh, problems can arise. The first could be clock skew, and that's a spatial clock variation. And this basically is a difference in the arrival time at two spatially distinct points. So these are two different registers, and the clocks arrive here at different times. And that difference is called the, the clock skew. You can also have clock jitter, and clock jitter is basically at one register where the clock period varies over time. So it's it's one register, and the clock uh, the variation is in the period of the clock. So how do those two things arise? Well, it's pretty clear to see how a variation in skew can arise. Here's a or let's say a big clock buffer, and uh, what is happening is that there's different uh, length of wire out to these registers, and perhaps different numbers of of buffers in the way, etc. So th certainly there could be some variation that's going to cause clock skew. Uh, jitter a little bit more difficult to understand perhaps or why it might come about. It's variation in local clock load perhaps. Uh, the local power supply could vary across the chip. The uh, gate threshold could vary and primarily that might be as a, a function of temperature and a temperature would be a function of how much activity is going on around that particular register where the chip would heat up. So one of the means that you can uh, accomplish a clock distribution is to use a clock grid. It has low skew but high power. And this is the, the idea behind it. You have, again, a cascaded set of buffers to drive a relatively large capacity of load, and you want to drive this thing uh, synchronously so that these, these registers see very little the difference in the clock arrival rate, clock arrival time. Uh, in addition to a, a grid, you might have something that resembles more like a tree. This is highly uh, idealized. It probably wouldn't look much like this on an actual chip. But it's a recursive pattern to distribute signals uniformly with equal uh, delay over an area. This is much more likely the case that you're going to see is you have your clock buffer and that what you'd end up doing is making sure that the RC for each of these routes is approximately the same, taking into account the fact that you might have some buffers in there. So you might be looking at, uh, at least in the simplest type of example, like at those Elmore delays that we looked at earlier. Here's a clock distribution example of a de-skewing circuit. So out here somewhere you'd have a, a crystal oscillator. Uh, this is going to be driving a phase lock loop and then some voltage control oscillator to get us a nice high clock signal here. And these are these DSKU units which would go to a, a regional grid. So these are small portions of the grid for local distribution. And there'd be a number of those and you'd want them all to be synchronized. Within each of these you'd have perhaps a, a, a buffer and then our standard register, combination logic and register. Or if we were concerned about power and this part of the circuit isn't always active, you might have a gated clock. So those are some of the things that you know might be seen on a you know, fairly detailed uh, layout. This was for an Intel Itanium, which is a server that uh, was quite popular through the early 2000s. Now here's an interesting piece of that circuit. Uh, this is, we're just going to look at this little delay unit here, because what we're trying to do is make sure that all of these regional clock grids are synchronized. And this is what the, that uh, de uh, delay circuit might look like. So here we have a control register. It has ones and zeros on it, and basically it goes up there and it turns on or off these transmission gates that you saw before, which present a different load to these inverters, which are uh, cascaded. And the load is just a capacitive load, and this is a, a, a basically a capacitor that doesn't have much uh, uh, voltage dependence because you've used the gate of the N-type device and the gate of the P-type device, and in both of those devices, the source and drains are tied to the respective uh, power supply rails. And that would happen for any of these. So depending if there's a 1 or a 0 in here, you'd get a different delay value. Uh, anyway, reducing clock distribution problems, make logical partitions, uh, match physical partitions. That limits global communication, where skew is usually the worst, and helps break the problem into smaller problems. Uh, on a large uh, chip, you, uh, like we saw before, you'd have locally synchronous regions, and those would be connected with uh, asynchronous channels. Or the other extreme is to use the synchronous design completely, which avoids clocks, but is much more difficult to engineer, and not to the best of my knowledge an industry practice. Anyway, here's a, a, some example of some clock tree synthesis for ASICs. There are backend tools that would create a balanced IRC trees, or perhaps insert uh, clock buffers. 
and can also add some clock shielding to reduce some of the coupling. Um, it was noted on this set of notes here that the automatic clock tree generation still results in worse uncertainties compared to handcrafted clock trees. And there are some of the stats that were given there, but the, the point is that if you had handcrafted, it's going to cost you a lot more money. Here's an example of a, of a CAD tool that is showing a part of a clock tree distribution network. It doesn't look very complicated because it's not very big, but it's only this tiny small red portion of this overall large red chip. And then some analysis tools would basically provide you uh, an idea what the delay is going to look like at different uh, registers that you're talking to. So anyway, with respect to clock analysis, it's better to use a st statistical analysis than worst case. Worst case tends to lead to something that's over-designed, uh, in, in which case you also use the most accurate post layout extraction. That's a notion of back annotation that we talked about before. And something you perhaps haven't seen is include some random random open fluctuations. These devices are so small that they're not uh, they're no longer uniformly doped and uh, that model really doesn't hold anymore. You also have to include thermal and voltage variations which give you a consequence of the activity of the devices around the uh the uh, particular piece of logic that you're looking at. And uh, in any event, you try to minimize variation. So you use decoupling caps to, to smooth out the, the clock signals. And you may even use some clock shielding to, again, reduce some of the coupling. Next, we'll look at power dissipation.